This week on ANN, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in North America responds to reports of families being separated as they cross the border into the United States. Adventist leaders in the Middle East meet with the president of Lebanon. And thousands of refugees in Uganda will receive food assistance thanks to Adra Uganda. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in North America recently responded to reports of children being separated from their families as they cross into the United States from neighboring Mexico. It is estimated that more than 2,000 children have been separated from their families after the United States federal government announced a zero-tolerance immigration policy. This means all adults who cross the border illegally between official ports of entry will be criminally prosecuted. Since children can't be sent to federal jail or detained with their parents, they are separated from them. The statement from the church in North America expresses concern with recent policies saying the Seventh-day Adventist Church in North America joins other faith-based groups in expressing concern over these actions and is deeply worried when biblical texts are used by those in power to affirm them. We strongly encourage all political parties to quickly seek a joint resolution that will not only bring these separated families back together, but also keep this from ever happening again. The statement goes on to say, we affirm the right of our government to protect its borders and enforce the law, but it is a moral obligation of this country to protect all who cross our borders. Romans 13.10 guides us with these words, love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Please join us in praying for the families that are currently separated and fearful for those they love. May they soon find peace and joy in each other's arms. A delegation from the Middle East and North African Union and Middle East University recently visited the Lebanese presidential palace accompanied by newly elected member of parliament, Edgar Trubalzi. His Excellency, Michael Aoun, president of Lebanon, received the representatives, Rick McEdward, President of the church's regional headquarters thanked the president for supporting freedom of religion and practice in Lebanon. He also spoke to the president about the role of Adventists in serving the community through educational work and humanitarian acts, also mentioning our hope in Christ's second coming. He highlighted two secondary schools and especially Middle East University, which has been operating since 1939. McEdward further emphasized the work of Adventist development and relief agency through the years and especially now towards the many refugees. ADRA is involved in providing core needs in response to the refugee crisis. The president responded by saying that Lebanon greatly values all the work that is done in the schools and at Middle East University in providing quality education to the country's youth. He also assured the delegation that he would happily support Adventist institutions as they continue to do their work. Thousands of refugees in Uganda will receive food assistance thanks to a recent cooperative effort between the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, the World Food Program, and the Government of Uganda through the Office of the Prime Minister. The partnership, which was agreed on in June 2018, will allow ADRA to provide food for more than 85,000 refugees currently settled in the district of Kamwenj, in western Uganda. An influx of refugees is reported to increase as long-standing conflicts have forced many citizens from the Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan to cross over the Ugandan border. According to recent reports, an estimated 1.3 million refugees have remained in the neighboring country. Since 1987, ADRA has forged a positive presence in Uganda, creating long-standing relationships with up to 15 districts. As a result of its deep-rooted network, ADRA collaborated with the WFP in food distribution in 1998, 2000, 2010, 2011, and again this year. ADRA has also been promoting school gardening initiatives in several refugee settlements, including Ruamwanja, Ajumani, and Bidi Bidi to help boost school feeding initiatives in select refugee hosting schools. With additional food needs that will be met through WFP's assistance, ADRA Uganda will help provide nutritious meals daily for a year and cash support aimed at helping the refugees generate income. Country Director Charles Aguilar says, ADRA Uganda has committed to a long-term presence in Kamwenj and plans to implement a range of livelihoods, development interventions, such as capacity building of refugees to operate kitchen and backyard gardens, grow crops, and sustain food to support their families and also support protecting the environment by planting 10,000 fruit trees. 
The Associate Director of Adventist Chaplaincy Ministries for the Adventist Church in North America was recently selected for a promotion, Captain for the United States Navy Reserve. The promotion will bring Washington Johnson II greater leadership responsibilities through extensive oversight for religious programming. He will also counsel members of the Navy Reserve's senior leadership ranks regarding spiritual, moral, and ethical issues. Johnson is now the third African-American Seventh-day Adventist to hold the rank of the United States Navy Chaplain Corps, following Captain Ehrman Kibble and Admiral Barry Black. Johnson says, I am truly grateful to God for the blessing of this selection and the opportunity to continue my chaplaincy ministry in the new rank. It is a high honor to serve both God and country. Johnson's new level administrative authority in the Navy Reserve expands the scope of his duties to include strategic planning and the training and development of other chaplains of various faiths. Johnson says the promotion will increase his mentoring opportunities and will help to prepare the next generation of Seventh-day Adventist chaplains. Johnson is also a staff chaplain at the North American Aerospace Defense Command and the United States Northern Command in the U.S. state of Colorado. Last week, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, along with the rest of the world, recognized World Refugee Day. The Adventist Church also recognizes the Sabbath before World Refugee Day, Refugee Sabbath. Today, there are more than 65 million people, men, women, and children, who have fled their homes due to war, lack of food, or violence. They are migrants, refugees, and internally displaced people. These people have endured the worst of humanity. They have seen their family members killed, tortured, and starved to death. They are the victims of atrocities many of us cannot even fathom. We understand this is a complicated issue with no easy answers. But to the Seventh-day Adventist Church and those who volunteer in these situations, this is a call of the Lord to minister, heal, protect, and comfort. During this time, the Adventist Church shared multiple stories from Revival for a Mission, a program from Adventist Church President Ted N.C. Wilson for Adventists involved in ministries to refugees. You can view these videos on Facebook.com slash The Adventist Church. On Refugee Sabbath, The Adventist Church's two divisions in Europe joined together for a day-long broadcast featuring refugee stories from around the world. You can watch their broadcasts and videos on YouTube.com and look for TED-Adventist. If you would like to learn more or find out how you can be involved in this important work, you can visit ADRA.org, AdventistHelp.org, or AdventistLearningCenter.org. Coming up, Adra Check developed a new mobile app that also helps refugees from Syria. But up next, the Prime Minister in Vanuatu opens an Adventist music festival. Peter and John were called in by the chief priests and elders about their preaching. They tried to defend their actions, but the leaders were very hard on them. They were commanded not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. After further threats, they let them go. Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said. <laughs> When we heard all this, we immediately raised our voices in prayer to God. The entire group prayed for Peter and John. We prayed for God to give boldness to these two humble servants. Such intense prayer I had not experienced for a long time. After we had prayed, suddenly the whole place was shaken. People were filled with the Holy Spirit, and Peter and John went out and gave witness with great power and grace. They witnessed throughout the land about the resurrection of their Savior. Welcome back. A Vanuatu member of parliament postponed important appointments to attend and officially open the 7th Adventist Music Festival of the Fate running from June 7 to 11. This annual gospel singing event was initiated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 2012 to celebrate the Adventist movement in Vanuatu. The Honorable Minister of Eternal Affairs, Andrew Solomon Napuat, said that the program was special because it promoted original songs from singing groups. He said, I believe in the process of composing songs. Artists dig deeper into the Bible and as they do it, it changes them and it will change the people who listen to them sing. 
Yeah, more than 40 groups are scheduled to sing their original compositions at the music festival. The theme of this year's festival is gospel in every act, meaning that the gospel of Jesus can be shared by everyone, anywhere, and anytime when one uses the talents God has blessed them with. Now, Pouant said that he planned to attend the remaining evenings of the festival with his family and would encourage his fellow members of parliament to attend. More than 360 Seventh-day Adventist theologians, college and university professors, and church administrators have convened in Rome, Italy for the fourth International Bible Conference. The gathering explores a chosen theme associated with theological studies through the presentation of papers, discussion panels, and professional networking. The event is organized by the Biblical Research Institute, which exists to promote the study and practice of Adventist theology and lifestyle as understood by the world church. In Rome, the chosen theme is eschatology, a word that literally means the teaching of the last things and describes the study of last day events and associated subjects. The choice of location, partnered with the theme, is meaningful. As part of introductory remarks, Ted Wilson, president of the 70 Adventist Church, greeted the scholars, sharing his deep interest in the subject. The thing that drives me, animates me, keeps me moving toward the goal, is Jesus soon coming. I believe that this is going to be an extraordinary time, focusing on an extraordinary topic. For more information on this meeting, you can visit AdventistReview.org. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency in the Caribbean recently co-hosted psychosocial training for mental health professionals in St. Martin. The goal was to assist in building community resilience as the island is still recovering from three hurricanes that hit last year. The training became the third major intervention by ADRA on the island. More than 80% of the homes on the island are still damaged and have tarps on their roofs. Rebuilding has been slow and family life is still disrupted, so ADRA was called on to assist with the training. The training in St. Martin gathered more than 35 health and mental health professionals from several government and non-government organizations. They were exposed to the neuroscience of resilience and the skill set necessary to achieve positive coping strategies. ADRA Caribbean Director Alexander Isaacs says many people are still without jobs and their lives continue to be disrupted, so ADRA maintains its assistance. St. Martin's Minister of Health, Emil Lee, commended ADRA for their support on the island throughout the months and thanked the Adventist organization for introducing the ADRA model to the community, one that the government plans to implement. The training involved using a psychologically designed model, the Community Resiliency Model, which teaches individuals to better handle life stresses and traumatic events by using self-care techniques that stop trauma from hijacking the nervous system. The training also taught participants that the inevitable benefits gained through using resilience techniques include increased faith and a stronger advocacy for being good citizens. As a result of the recent training, the Ministry of Public Health, Social Development and L Labor has reached out to ADRA to schedule additional capacity building later this year for local professionals who work in the area of psychosocial care. To learn more about the work of ADRA in St. Martin and the rest of the islands of the North Caribbean Conference, visit NorthCaribbeanConference.org. The Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, officially launched its first safe water kiosk in Mokuba, Mozambique. The pump will provide 20 liters of safe water a day for more than 1,000 people. Mokuba, a district of the Zambezia province in Mozambique, has suffered from an inadequate safe water supply for years, but the prolonged drought conditions in southern Africa has made the situation worse. More than 100 people attended the grand opening of the new water kiosk, including Mokuba's mayor, Beatrice Gulamo, a proud supporter of the community project. The mayor and several Adra Mozambique representatives held a ribbon-cutting ceremony and announced that the use of the kiosk is now available. Jason Brooks, senior technical advisor for water, sanitation, and hygiene for Adra International, emphasized that the kiosk is a means to help the community gain access to safe water. The hope is that eventually the project can be maintained by the community. Brooks said, the residents are the ones who will benefit from the kiosk, but ADRA wants to ensure they can take care of the kiosk and sustain the water source so the community receives safe water for a long time. ADRA will train community members and will help them eventually establish ownership of the kiosk. The newly implemented kiosk contains numerous features, solar panels that pump water automatically from the source to an elevated holding tank, multiple water taps, two video monitors for bystanders promoting sanitation and hygiene information, ice dispensers, 
clothes wash, and recycling capabilities. There are also cell phone chargers, allowing users to buy cell phone credits at the same time. Residents will also be able to purchase soap, toothbrushes, and feminine products to encourage better hygiene practices. Purchases are managed on a tablet handled by a kiosk attendant. The water was unsafe and tainted by people bathing in the river or washing clothes according to community members. Now, with the installment of the new water kiosk, anyone could fetch gallons of safe water at their leisure in a safer environment. The kiosk is located near the community school and in a public setting. To read more about this project, visit adra.org. When anti-government demonstrations began in Syria in March 2011, a violent government crackdown ensued. That, combined with armed opposition groups, resistance created a war that has left an estimated 6.5 million people without homes in the country. More than 5 million refugees have fled to neighboring countries like Lebanon, Jordan, and Turkey. In 2016, Adra Czech got their chance to help the Syrian refugees by developing a game app. Yakub Sharvat from Adra Czech says when they came up with the concept, they had specific ideas of what they wanted the game to be. He said, we didn't want the game to be brutal, violent, or associated with war. It made sense to instead create a game about helping others, and that's where the idea for Husky the Savior was born. The fun interactive game app can be downloaded on any iOS or on Android device at no cost. Once the app is downloaded, gamers select the play button to start the game. Gamers have to help the Husky character rescue puppies without getting caught. Sharvat further explained that gamers help Adra Check through in-app purchases, a voluntary way of earning bonus points in the game, or by watching sponsored videos while playing the game as long as the gamer can. The more gamers download the game app, the more Syrian refugees will receive help. So far, the game app has been downloaded more than 1,000 times since its launch in April. To download or for more information about Adra Check's game app, visit huskythesavior.com. Coming up, Emily Mastrapa tells us about a film contest to promote Creation Sabbath. But up next, a health center in India is bringing people to God. Discipline, a willingness to go beyond your normal development. Cardiovascular, flexibility, strength, agility, balance, focus. All the basic exercise groups are accomplished in martial arts. Uh, I'm currently a, a fourth Dan or fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo and Hapkido. I've been an instructor for over 10, 15 years now. One of the joys that I have is developing people. I was taught by an instructor who had a holistic approach, who taught a philosophy of exercise. I understood from then that martial arts was not about fighting, but it was about self-development. The self-discipline part of martial arts really teaches you self-control. And I, that's one of the uh, fruits of the Holy Spirit, that we learn to control ourselves. Just because you're an athlete in the church to participate in sports or activity doesn't mean you're a Christian. Uh, Christianity is a way of life. Uh, you become a fit instrument for the Holy Spirit to use. Our primary responsibility is to be a vehicle whereby God can use us as vessels to build up his kingdom. So we bring everything to God. Our body becomes temple of the Holy Spirit to live within us. God expects us to be holistic, mind and body and spirit. You can't be spiritual um, apart from being a whole person. So you honor God in all things. I, I don't compartmentalize. I think that we ought to use all of our gifts, all of our abilities to glorify God and to develop them for his honor and glory. I'm Dr. Anthony Medley, senior pastor of the Emmanuel Brink Little Church, and this is my whole life. Across the street from the Vibrant Life Medical and Wellness Clinic is another health care center. Heb Seba works at the center across the street, but she often visits Vibrant Life and refers some patients there. It's in this Adventist Health Center that she herself found hope and healing. Adventist Mission has more. 
Across the street from the Vibrant Life Medical and Wellness Clinic is another healthcare center. Hepsiba works at the center across the street, but she often visits Vibrant Life and refers some patients there. It's in this Adventist Health Center that she herself found hope and healing. At Vibrant Life, Hepsiba and members of her family received natural treatments that improved their health in ways they did not think was possible. I could literally feel that pain relieving out of me. And it was a great experience. Since then, I've just been visiting them very frequently. And uh, my mother-in-law is also a diabetic patient. So for almost um, close to uh, eight, nine years, we haven't seen her sugar levels come down more uh, lesser than uh, 390. We've tried all treatments and uh, that hasn't brought the sugar levels down. But after three months of counseling, a special diet and some medication, this picture changed dramatically. Last month, her sugar levels were uh, 97, which was unbelievable for us. Today, many people come to the Vibrant Life Medical and Wellness Clinic because of Hepsiba's enthusiastic referral. Every day, at least two patients have been sending in here referring. This Adventist Center offers natural treatment solutions for chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. Doctors Narendra and Daisy Rao teach their patients about the impacts of lifestyle choices on their health. The staff puts on health expos coupled with screenings and counseling to raise awareness of relevant topics for this community. Patients of all classes are treated here, from the poor and needy to orphans next door to the wealthy who are looking for an alternative to the side effects of long-term medication. There is a great need for um, lifestyle interventions in our country because we have at present nearly 70 million people with diabetes and about 30 million with heart disease and another 30 million who are obese. Vibrant Life doctors provide affordable services the goal is to attract patients at a price point that is competitive, yet fosters sustainability, so this small mission clinic can continue to grow. And so we have proposed a bigger center, which will include all kind of uh, services, including diagnostics, nutrition counseling, health food store and restaurant, exercise facility, a swimming pool, and above all, a training center. We have no training center in India to train our uh, gospel workers in medical missionary work. So we want this center to be a center of influence where we can help our workers to reach out to the community through health evangelism. Your support of Global Mission helps Vibrant Life and other Life Hope Centers. Please pray for the health ministry work in this large metropolis. Pray that this clinic can become a model for many more in the vast country of India. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. Attention filmmakers! The Geoscience Research Center is holding a film contest to promote a creation Sabbath on October 27th. Emily Mastrapa is here to share how you can enter. Nothing impacts our understanding of reality more than creation. That's why we have Creation Sabbath and there is no medium that has more impact today than film. The Geoscience Research Institute, or GRI, wants to put Creation Sabbath and film together. They are looking for an amazing and original short film about the biblical record of creation. Make your film as original as you want. GRI is looking for films that show your personal stance on a topic. If you think people are equal, that is grounded in your understanding of where humans came from, and thus human nature. If you think living species are valuable, that is grounded in your understanding of where species came from. If you think life has meaning and purpose, that is informed by where you think life came from. GRI wants a film that is new and cuts through the noise, a film that gets the message out that God is our creator and redeemer. First prize is $5,000 and up to another $5,000 invested to make your film even better. Second place will win $2,000 and third will win $1,000. Your film needs to be under five minutes long. They're still working out the final details, but remember to check on their website for updates visit grisda.org. You can also find information on their Facebook page at Geoscience Research Institute. Feel free to send any questions to creationsabbath at grisda.org. You can find more information about Creation Sabbath at creationsabbath.net. 
And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, Adventist leaders took a very special field day during the Massachusetts camp meeting of 1926. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. June 17, 1926 marked an innovative new departure for the Massachusetts camp meeting, which was held near the school and college in South Lancaster. June 17 was the scheduled field day when all those attending the camp meeting were invited to go out and about to witness. As you can see in this photo here, about 300, many of them lay people, did go out, ferried as much as 30 miles by automobiles and trucks that conference workers had carefully scheduled. Groups each spent several hours distributing copies of Present Truth, but often they then spent time talking with and praying for the people they met. It's a wonderful early example of total member involvement. And as one participant exclaimed at the end of the camp meeting, God honored the willingness shown by his people to do service for him by pouring out a great blessing upon them. On June 23, 1926, August Svedberg died at Hinsdale Sanitarium near Chicago, aged 68. Svedberg was originally from Iowa from a family of Swedish immigrants. One of the first students at Battle Creek College when it opened in 1874, Swedberg intended to go back to Iowa to become a teacher. But James White personally urged him to stay in Battle Creek, and August accepted a job at the Review and Herald Publishing Association. And so, as one of his colleagues later recalled, he became connected with the publishing work to which he gave the greater part of his life and for which he seemed to be in a special way adapted and qualified. August edited the Adventist Church's two Swedish language periodicals for 32 years before in 1916, due to increasing ill health, he accepted a call to teach Bible at Broadview Seminary in Illinois, which had been founded in 1909 as a Swedish language seminary. He was still teaching there when, while serving as a delegate to the 1926 General Conference Session in Milwaukee, he had a stroke from which he never recovered. The church's very considerable strength among Scandinavian Americans in the late 19th and early 20th century owed much to August Svedberg. That was this week in Seventh Day Adventist History. Thanks for watching, Anna. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your feedback and tell us how your church is making a difference in its community. And be sure to capture plenty of video footage and photos, then write up a summary of the event's important details. And feel free to send full video reports as well. You can reach us by sending an email to annonvideo11 at gmail.com. Now before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Romans chapter 13, verse 8. The passage says, Oh, no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Amen. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.